Hello, and welcome to this lesson on account management in the Interactive Brokers Client Portal API. In this lesson, we will be discussing how to review account summary details, as well as requesting position information using the Client Portal API. To begin, we can start by taking a closer look at the portfolio forward slash account ID forward slash summary endpoint. This endpoint provides a summary of a specified account and a quick reference details therein. Now we can jump right into our standard framework for a new Python file, account summary.py. I could start this file by naming my method account sum and then a set of parentheses. Inside my method, I can use my standard structure, but this time I will set my endpoint variable to portfolio forward slash my account ID forward slash summary. Given we already provided our account ID, there are no further parameters or details to request. So let's go ahead and build our actual request. Given that we are just retrieving account information today, we will only be using get requests. I can set my URL to the base URL plus the endpoint variable. With my request variable set, I can print this along with my JSON value to see the full range of data. If we run this code, we will see all of the details returned. As you can imagine, the summary endpoint doesn't go too much into detail, though it can provide a quick reference to details such as your account's available funds. We can also find details about maintenance and initial margin requirements and a host of other values. We would strongly reviewing the full list of details available. In many instances, you will see three returns of what seems to be the same value. Let's use available funds as an example. We can see available funds, available funds dash C, and available funds dash S, all returned in a row. These values are all used to designate specific details. All fields ending in dash C will notate the value specific to commodities. Meanwhile, dash S will provide information on securities. And then the base value, like available funds, will reference for the whole account. While it can be nice to retrieve account information at a glance, we often would like to retrieve more exact details. To kick things off, let's go ahead and create a new file so we can review our positions information. In addition to the normal framework, I will establish my endpoint variable once again. I will set this to portfolio forward slash my account ID forward slash positions forward slash zero. You might initially find this endpoint odd given the trailing zero value. The reason we have this extra index is because our positions endpoint is paginated. That means that you may request or receive multiple pages of data. A typical page will include up to 30 securities per page. If you trade a myriad of contracts, you may need to request the send point with a 0, 1, or even a 2 value at the end to retrieve all of your positions. However, for most typical traders, you will often just use the first page with 0. Now, we could set up our get request and JSON dumps values and run our code. In doing so, we will retrieve a list of arrays. Each array will indicate a specific contract. These will include the account ID, contract ID, contract description or symbol, along with all of the values we might want to see alongside it. Something that may help to point out is that we can see a market price, market value, average cost, and average price fields returned. These are all understandably similar, so let's discuss what each value means. Market price indicates the current value of an individual contract on a per share basis. Meanwhile, market value will return market price multiplied by the total position value. This can be helpful to understand what your closing position might look like. Average price will represent the average cost of each share when you bought it. While it may not mean much if you bought a single share, or from a single trade, if you bought a share on Monday at $50, a share on Tuesday at $100, 
and then a share on Wednesday at $150, our average price will return $100, given that it's the average of every time you add it onto the position. The average cost field will often show the same value, but in the case of something like a derivative, this will show the average cost multiplied by the position and then the multiplier. My ES contract can represent this showing average price multiplied by my position multiplied by my multiplier of 50. In addition, if this endpoint is queried in a polling mode every few moments, then we will eventually see the endpoint return the full info and rules for all of your contracts. This can be helpful in saving the separate contract request elsewhere and can be a powerful tool to show all contract and position information. While it is great to see a whole list, as we mentioned, it can take some time to generate all of our contract details. So to better manage those requests, I may instead want to request an individual position's information. As long as I know my contract, like Apple's 265598 con ID, I can make a request or two to my endpoint and I will have a full contract information right away along with my positions info. All we need to do is make a new file and set a get request to the endpoint portfolio forward slash account ID forward slash position then forward slash our contract identifier. After populating my account ID and contract ID, I can run my code and see all of the information back for my Apple contract. Thank you for watching this lesson on account management in the Client Portal API. If you found this lesson helpful, please check out our other lessons in the Client Portal API tutorial series.